नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् साधु साधु so uh, today uh, we are taking up uh, samyutta nikaya uh, there are small uh, sutras which are there it is 35.153 is there a method and then uh, two more sutras sn 48.11 and 48.12 uh, is there a method of exposition bhikkhus by uh, means of which a bhikkhu apart from faith apart from personal preference that is a uh, personal uh, inclination or you can say person's choice uh, uh, we uh, call it habitual tendencies apart from oral tradition apart from reasoned reflection apart from acceptance of a view after pondering it and declare final knowledge thus destroyed is birth holy life has been lived what had to be done has been done there is no more of this state of being so this is a, a small uh, indication of nibbana Uh, a phrase which is used as a standard so in suktas we will find that there are a certain uh, concepts which are uh, put across which are important concepts which are put up across as a formula and certain uh, aspects are kind of explained in it i read it once again from the start yes bante because we could not hear you almost from the beginning so uh, the uh, sutta starts is there a method of exposition because by be means of which a bhikkhu apart from faith means uh, this is apart means you are not uh, uh, taking faith into uh, the consideration apart from personal preference or personal inclination of a personal choice it is not a personal view of one person apart from oral tradition that is that it is not a something which has been told by somebody about this uh, aspect apart from recent reflection means that you uh, take something up and uh, you uh, reason with it Th that is using logical uh, explanation apart from acceptance of a view after pondering it that is if you take up a kind of a view or a, uh, or a topic and you uh, think about it and after thinking about it you kind of accept that uh, point of view can declare final knowledge thus destroyed is birth the holy life has been lived what had to be done has been done there is no more for this state of being can somebody uh, declare nibbana uh, which does not include the faith part it does not include the personal preference it does not in include a oral tradition <laughs> does not uh, include a uh, reason or logic uh, by uh, logic or does not include uh, by acceptance of a view after pondering it that means by th uh, without thinking about it can somebody kind of uh, say that uh, i have attained nibbana that is the question venerable sir our teachings are rooted in the blessed one guided by the blessed one take recourse in the blessed one it would be good if the blessed one would clear up the meaning of this statement having heard it from him uh, the bhikkhus will remember it or you can call it students also uh, bante uses students instead instead of bhikkhus because everybody uh, was a student for him then listen and attend closely uh, i will speak yes when rebel sir the students replied the blessed one said this there is a method of exposition by means of which a bhikkhu or a student apart from faith apart from personal preference apart from oral tradition apart from reasoned reflection apart from acceptance of a view after pondering it can declare final knowledge thus destroyed is birth the holy life has been lived what had to be done has been done there is no more of this state of being and what is that method of exposition here uh, students having seen a form with the eye if there is lust hatred or delusion internally a, a, a student understands there is lust hatred or delusion internally lust is craving or greed or something uh, you want so that craving part uh, if that is there you are able to uh, 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 find, uh, say that this is internally 
uh, there. If it is a hatred or aversion, then if the uh, hatred or aversion is there, then you will be able to say that there is hatred or aversion internally in me. Or delusion. Delusion is, uh, uh, the explanation given by Bhante Vimar Ramsey is a simple thing like, this is me, taking it personally. That if there is a pain that I, uh, I am in pain, it is not there is a pain. Or if there is a uh, uh, anger in him, uh, anger in one oneself, then the person will say, I am angry, not there is anger as of now. So there is taking it personally, that is the delusion. So when a person has a delusion, a student has a delusion, then he will be able to say that there is a delusion uh, currently, or I am taking these things personally at this point of time. There is lust, hatred or del delusion internally. Or if there is no lust, no hatred or delusion internally, he understands there is no lust, hatred or delusion internally. Since this is so, are these things to be understood by faith or by personal preference or by oral tradition or by reasoned reflection or by acceptance of a view after pondering it? So the Buddha is asking uh, that if this is the case, that uh, if uh, you uh, have a, a, a lust or hatred or delusion in your mind, are you uh, able to uh, point out uh, this? Uh, does faith uh, come into uh, question in this uh, in this process? Is uh, personal preference come into the uh, question? Does uh, uh, reasoning come into question? Does uh, oral tradition come into the question? So the uh, students say, no venerable sir. Aren't these uh, things to be understood by seeing them with wisdom? Yes, venerable sir. So when you see something with wisdom, wisdom is uh, uh, as explained by Bhante Vimar Ramsi is the understanding of dependent origination, understanding of the impermanent nature of things, understanding of the, uh, the uh, impersonal nature, uh, the impermanence, impersonal nature and Dukkha. That uh, are the things when we understand and from that point of view we uh, see, we are seeing it with wisdom. So when we are uh, doing the six R, the first step, what, what is there? We recognize. What we recognize is our mind has been, uh, uh, my, our mind's attention has gone from our object of meditation to something else. So that is the important thing that we can recognize this on ourselves by seeing it with wisdom. There is nothing external required. There is no uh, reasoning required for that. There is no uh, faith required in that process. So one can uh, say this a uh, student is the method of exposition by means of which a, a, a student can declare final knowledge thus. Destroyed is birth. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more of this state of being. For the students, having heard a sound with the ear, having smelt a odor with the nose, having tasted a taste with the tongue, having a tactile object with the body, having felt a tactile object with the body, having recognized a mental phenomena with the mind. If there is lust, hatred or delusion internally, a student understands there is a lust, hatred or delusion internally. If there is no lust or hatred or delusion internally, he understands there is no uh, lust, hatred or delusion internally. Since this is so, are these things to be understood by faith or by personal preference or by oral tradition or by reason reflection or by acceptance of a view after pondering it? No, venerable sir. Aren't these things to be understood by seeing them with wisdom? Yes, venerable sir. This students is the method of exp exposition by uh, means of which a student, apart from faith, apart from personal preference, apart from oral tradition, apart from reason reflection, apart from acceptance of a view after pondering it, can declare final knowledge thus. Destroyed is birth, the holy life has been lived, what had to be done has been done. There is no more of the state of being. So uh, the Buddha is very uh, clear about it that uh, when a person understands uh, that there is uh, lust, hatred and delusion in her in internally, then he understands that there is uh, 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 still work to be done. And the person uh, or oneself is not uh, awakened, has not reached the Nibbana because uh, the Nibbana 
when a person is reaching that final stone, then uh, what happens is there, uh, the, what had to be done has been done. What had to be done was to remove the uh, lust, hatred and delusion. So if there is lust, hatred and delusion, we have not done what had to be done. So there is still work to be done. And if uh, at a point of time when uh, this uh, purification reaches and one uh, re recognizes that there is no lust, when he, they see something, when they hear something, then when they smell something, when they taste something, when they touch something, uh, there is no kind of lust arising uh, for that uh, 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 thing. Or if there is no uh, hatred, you do not have aversion for those things. Or you don't have a, a, a personal, uh, uh, taking it personally. Uh, that is, uh, you don't have del delusion. That time you can yourself declare yourself to be uh, have been an arahan. You don't need an external force or external uh, uh, person uh, to kind of uh, uh, say that you are uh, awakened because the, uh, the factor of awakening is uh, uh, something which uh, one can see for oneself. There is no external things required. Now there is one other thing about how do you reach that uh, state of uh, awakening. So there is a uh, again a very simple way of uh, explaining that, uh, which is uh, uh, by using the five factors of awakening. So uh, the, the, that is the uh, five faculties. The there are five faculties and there are five powers. So faculties and powers uh, are used. Uh, there are the same uh, set of uh, things which are uh, uh, called as faculties and power. The explanation which has been given uh, in many places is faculties is the starting point. Faculties is used to kind of uh, uh, dispel uh, your uh, uh, hindrances. And when uh, that has been established, then that those become your powers. So those things are the same things. Uh, one other way uh, somebody has explained, one uh, monk uh, has explained is, that faculties are the thing when you are doing as a student, as a, as a lay student, and when you have attained uh, at least uh, Sotapanna, then those become powers because they take you forward towards the Nibbana. So we will go through that uh, over here. It is very uh, simple. Uh, this also is a very simple and straightforward uh, Sutta. It is 48.11. So uh, students, there are these five faculties. What five? The faculty of faith, the faculty of energy, faculty of mindfulness, faculty of collectedness, and the faculty of wisdom. So faculty of faith is the faith in the uh, awakening state of mind. Uh, some uh, people say it is the faith in the Buddha. The, but the Buddha is not a person. Buddha is a state of mind. The Buddha, uh, the, the Buddha is a state of awakened mind. So you have faith in a process by which a person can be rid of the hatred, lust and delusion. So if you have faith in that, then uh, that uh, uh, kind of induces you to kind of give ear. Giving ear is to listen. When you listen, you uh, are uh, kind of inclined to practice. When you practice, you are uh, having more faith, uh, you become stronger. And when you uh, again uh, listen, practice and experience, then you uh, uh, have confidence because you have seen what is happening and what is uh, the change in your uh, habitual tendencies. When you have confidence, you uh, uh, practice more and you get a proof of that uh, thing. And then you continue your practice and reach your goal. So faith is a starting point. And if you, a person does not have faith, then he comes with the investigation. So he comes as uh, to investigate. To, uh, coming as uh, to investigate, he has, uh, uh, he gives ear. He gives ear means he listens to the Dhamma. When he listens to the Dhamma, he practices. When he practices, he uh, has confidence in it. When he has confidence, he uh, again practices more, listens more, and then uh, uh, progresses towards the goal. So in this, uh, in this uh, uh, way, uh, if you come by faith or you come as an investigation, it leads to the same path. The faculty of faith, the faculty of energy. Energy is any effort you put. So the one way of explaining energy is the six R's. 
is the right effort. Right effort is the energy you put in your uh, practice. Uh, the faculty of mindfulness is, uh, as uh, Bante says, that to remember how your mind's attention is moving from one thing to another and how it is impersonal and how uh, uh, the dependent origination is uh, the link of this whole process. So that is how mindfulness works. The faculty of collectedness. Collectedness is a uh, concentration, uh, but uh, this is a way of bringing your uh, faculties in a uh, uh, place where you can uh, have a, a productive amount of concentration that you are not absorbed in a, a, on the object of meditation, but you have a, a amount of uh, uh, stillness that you will be able to observe what is happening. Be with the observation only, you will be able to know what is happening and how the mind's attention is moving. Not why it is moving, but how it is moving. Then the faculty of wisdom. Wisdom is the most important factor uh, because wisdom is uh, the understanding of the dependent origination. And it includes dependent origination. Each link includes uh, the in impermanence, uh, the dukkha, and uh, the impersonal nature of everything. So these are included in each uh, link of the dependent origination. So the wisdom factor. And what student is the faculty of faith? Here, uh, students, the noble disciple, disciple is a person of faith, one who places faith in the enlightenment of the Tathagata. Thus, the blessed one is uh, awakened, teacher of uh, devas and human, the enlightened one, the blessed one. This is called the faculty of faith. And what a student is the faculty of energy? energy that one obtains on the basis of four right strivings. That is the right effort or six hours. This is called the faculty of energy. And what uh, students is the faculty of mindfulness? The mindfulness that one obtains on the basis of the four establishments of mindfulness. That is called the faculty of mindfulness. Four establishment of mindfulness is also satipatthana. There are four uh, things which you kind of can look at. Then one is the body and uh, feeling. Then uh, there is uh, mind and mind objects. One other way of saying is that uh, without the body, there cannot be feelings. So it is kind of a progressive way. If, if you consider the body, then uh, you need uh, uh, to have the body to have feelings. But you cannot uh, 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 ex uh, experience the feeling without having the faculty of mind. And you will not have uh, the thoughts without having the faculty of mind. So that is the progression also one, one can see that. And uh, once uh, one is observing uh, your object of meditation like in metta, then they are observing uh, the, all the things. That is the uh, body. We are aware of the body. We are aware of the feeling of the metta. We are aware of the mind, uh, how the mind's attention is moving. And we are aware of the thoughts which are are coming and going. So when we are doing the meditation, we are also <coughs> taking care of these four aspects of Satipatthana. Also is uh, simultaneously uh, uh, we are practicing. The mindfulness one obtains on the basis of the four establishments of mindfulness. This is called the faculty of mindfulness. And what uh, students is the faculty of collectedness. Here Students, a noble disciple gains uh, concentration, gains one-pointedness of mind or ekaga means collectedness of mind, having made release uh, the object. This is called the uh, faculty of concentration. And what student is the faculty of wisdom? Here, students, the noble disciple is wise. He possesses wisdom directed to arising and passing away, which is the noble and penetrative uh, leading to the complete destruction of suffering. This is called the faculty of wisdom. These uh, students are the five faculties. Now, arising and uh, passing away is a part uh, which is uh, uh, emphasized by the Buddha in many of the, the impermanence. So one uh, way of uh, looking at it is the Buddha also explains in uh, other suttas is that you cannot have one uh, and uh, uh, and not uh, understand the other. So see, if there is uh, impermanence, then it is also Dukkha. So because uh, if you have, uh, say, a pleasant uh, uh, temperature in your room, okay, 
and there is a, a load shedding and then uh, the, the light goes away or the uh, the ac or the fan uh, malfunctions then uh, the, the, because of that a pleasant uh, temperature uh, going you will feel a discomfort that is the dukkha so impermanence also has the concept of dukkha in it and if uh, something is impermanent then it cannot be called a self the theory of the soul is that the soul is in uh, the eternal uh, it was always there it is there and it will always be there so it cannot be if something is impermanent it cannot be uh, uh, called a self so when we are talking about uh, say uh, uh, in, uh, impermanence we are also talking about the dukkha in it and also the impersonal nature of this and if you are talking about dukkha then uh, a soul or a, a concept of soul cannot be considered to be uh, correct because a soul cannot be uh, unhappy because it is a, a, it is a, a, a eternal thing being so that that concept cannot be fitting with the concept of dukkha so when we are seeing dukkha we can also see the uh, impersonal nature and uh, we can also see the impermanence because there is uh, if there is something which is uh, forever then it cannot be uh, dukkha it uh, it has to be uh, something which is pleasant so uh, because uh, if there is an unchanging state of mind then the, the, the that state uh, which is there cannot be considered to be a dukkha so uh, when we look at the dukkha we can see the other two th aspects also when we see imper impersonal nature we also see that uh, because uh, this is an uh, impersonal uh, nature is there then we have uh, dukkha because we are taking it personally and also that it cannot be permanent because if it is impersonal if it is not a soul then it is uh, impermanent so when we look at one aspect we can look at the other two aspects uh, together any any aspect we take of these three they are three linked together uh, by each other so when we uh, the buddha is talking about over here uh, rising and passing away he is talking about impermanence but he is also in that uh, 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 concept the dukkha is also uh, linked and the impersonal nature the anatta also is there in this concept so this is the uh, thing which the buddha is saying that uh, when you develop this five faculties you uh, uh, will uh, uh, be able to attain uh, nibbana uh, now uh, uh, there is one other uh, aspect of this which the buddha is explaining in the uh, uh, the next sutta which is 48.12 uh, this is the shortest one student there are these five faculties what five the faculty of faith the faculty of energy faculty of mindfulness faculty of collectedness and the faculty of wisdom these are the five faculties one who has uh, completed and fulfilled these five faculties is an arhant so over here, the Buddha is saying that one who fulfills his five faculties is an arhant. These, uh, 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 if they are weaker than that, one is a non-returner. So if he has not fulfilled uh, to, to its uh, complete uh, logical conclusion, then one is a non-returner. If weaker, one uh, a once returner. If still weaker, a stream enterer if still weaker a dhamma follower if still weaker a faith follower so in this way the buddha is saying that this is something which a person uses from the start to the end and also uh, from all stages of the dhamma so now we have uh, we are clear about this four uh, uh, stages which are the sotapanna the uh, sadagami anagami arahant uh, Buddha uh, uh, in many of the suttas also mentions a dhamma follower and a faith follower. The faith follower is a, 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 a is an individual who has faith in the Buddha because of his un unshaking faith in the Buddha. He uh, uh, does the uh, work and uh, strives. Uh, uh, one way of uh, giving a simile uh, in the uh, uh, in the commentaries is like if uh, somebody is trying to cut a uh, banana plantain okay with a dull knife he uh, has to hack it away but he he will be able to do it he is trying to cut a banana uh, plantain with a dull knife and a dhamma follower is something who ponders and uh, uh, kind of reflects on the uh, the aspects of dhamma 
the basically uh, technically uh, uh, this is the itipiso that is the good qualities of the buddha good qualities of the uh, the dhamma the good qualities of the sangha this uh, this is the basic uh, technically and then other uh, teachings of the buddha he ponders on, on this and then he uh, practices he is like a person who has a sharp knife and he is cutting uh, through the plantain he will be able to uh, get rid of the hindrances in a very easy uh, way because when he uh, has uh, in, in our terms we say when he recognizes he will automatically release relax uh, re-smile and return back so uh, this is the way of uh, kind of explaining that a, a dhamma follower and if uh, 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 FA follower both have a, a kind of a, a inclination towards uh, they have not uh, attained any kind of a permanent state but they are inclined towards going towards uh, the uh, stage of Sutta Panna. So uh, one of the suttas, uh, it has been mentioned that if one is a Dhamma follower, then he, he will not have the end of this life uh, without becoming a uh, Sutta Panna. So that is also uh, important. And uh, some of the uh, uh, suttas and commentaries also indicate that this is the same thing for a faith follower. A faith follower will soon become a Dhamma follower and then soon become a Sotapanna. So Sotapanna is a kind of a, 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 a built up in this uh, uh, day and age as something which is a, a, a kind of a big achievement where it is very difficult to kind of attain that uh, state of uh, mind. But uh, as per the, uh, the suttas and as the Buddha says, the, uh, the, the, there are only three things required for uh, a Sotapanna. One is that he has a uh, uh, complete understanding that by doing rituals and by doing something external like uh, uh, I mean, going to a river and uh, dipping your head into the river water or offering cer certain things to a, a god or deity or doing a chanting or doing something which is external or which are considered to be uh, 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 Sila Bata Paramasa that is the uh, Pali word any kind of traditional uh, acts uh, of appeasement, one cannot become awakened. That is a uh, understanding one happens. Uh, that is a very clear with the uh, first sutta which we uh, took. That one knows for oneself if there is hate, uh, there is a uh, lust, uh, hatred, and delusion. And one knows if it, those uh, go down or they are not there. Second thing is that he has the faith that the press process which he is doing currently that process will lead him to the Nibbana. See, whatever uh, meditation you are doing or whatever practice you are doing, that practice is a kind of uh, uh, giving you a change in behavior. That is the thing. And the third is that uh, he has insight into the impersonal nature of uh, the uh, one person. That does not mean that he completely understands impersonal nature, <clears throat> but he has insight into it. Uh, uh, Anagami also has conceit. So uh, uh, a Sota Panna uh, has an insight into the uh, impersonal nature of things. So now when these three things are there, then one is a Sota Panna. And uh, if uh, there is a, a, a reduction in hatred and delusion, uh, then uh, what would happen is uh, the person would be uh, lust and uh, delusion. There is a, a kind of a hatred and a, a kind of lust. There is a reduction in that. Then one is a uh, uh, Sakdagami. Then there is uh, 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 the hatred and uh, lust uh, is uh, totally gone. Then one is considered a Anagami. So uh, after uh, 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 the remaining five fetters goes, then one is an Arahan. <coughs> but uh, Buddha also mentions one uh, part uh, in one of the suttas is that there is a, uh, a two to three times returner also. The Buddha mentioned in one. Uh, so one is a Sotapanna, but he, is, he, he returns only for uh, two or three times and attains Nibbana. So that is also one of the things which uh, uh, Buddha has mentioned. Sometimes uh, uh, Buddha kind of uh, mentions certain things in a standard formula, but then he gives exceptions to this. So one of the suttas that, uh, that has been given. So uh, this is uh, uh, all other suttas which I, uh, I had prepared. If uh, there's any questions for that, then I'm open for the questions now. 
the questions can be about this suttas or any other topic also what's the name of the person who's only two or three times returned i've not heard of that before yeah that, that, uh, he, uh, he says that uh, there is a sota panna who is a two to three, three times return that, uh, that he's considered the sota panna only sota panna yes to the same he still considered sota panna but uh, 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 i think uh, it has been mentioned uh, certain thing has been mentioned uh, the name i think he is a two to three, three times returner i think that is the uh, name uh, mentioned the uh, sutta. Any other questions? One other thing is that uh, in a, a nibbana, uh, uh, the the concept is that you will not be able to kind of uh, 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 tell for sure for the other person, but you will be able to tell for sure for uh, uh, oneself. That if one is fully awakened or not. So uh, one of the suttas, uh, the Buddha mentioned that if you want to kind of find out if the person uh, is a worthy uh, teacher, you have to stay with him for six months and see that if there were any states, because a person can uh, put up appearances uh, for say a month, two months, but he will not be able to keep up the appearances for a long time <laughs> yes is there a yes yes hello Banti. thank uh, you so much um my slightly strange question um i i was really happy the the sitters that you picked and um and it it's like that the first one was completely um yeah, talking around because I, I had um sometimes I have um dreams that are a bit like teaching dreams. I don't have them very often. Uh -huh. But last but this but just before this this sutta, the, the dream I had was about um like an internal um it was a sequence showing me about internal hatred. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. there was a sequence of jealousy. And then an internal um, lust, and so the dream was around showing me my my own internal drivers in response to something. It was making very clear yeah. that what was arising was within me. So the 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 question I have is it it's um they it's left the dreams left me a little bit dis disturbed because mm -hmm. it's. Um, it, it's shown where I've, uh, I, <laughs> where the, there's been a, a personal um, engagement with the content. Okay. Now, it's a dream. So in, in my daily life, I haven't gone into the thought processes, but I've been left with having gone through the, uh, that, that feeling of having lived something unwholesome so I, I want the question is what 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 do we do do we forgive ourselves for something that was in a dream and yeah. then we, we, we don't balance? Have, uh, see uh, one thing is that uh, uh, when you are having an insight into certain things you have to let it go you have to first understand that these are impersonal things which have uh, arisen they were not there they have arisen and they have uh, gone away so uh, the Buddha is uh, kind of clear about that where we are doing our work is that in the present. But we are also, uh, also whatever has happened in the past, we can uh, let go of those things in the present because those are uh, coming as burdens uh, from the past. So uh, whatever is there, you can let go of those things, uh, then uh, uh, direct your attention to something which is wholesome. Forgiveness, you can uh, do the forgiveness if you want to do forgiveness or you can uh, 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 give yourself metta, put your attention on the metta, giving yourself metta, then you can share this metta uh, as a dana uh, to all the uh, uh, sentient beings uh, around you. And they, they, uh, the Buddha says that don't limit uh, the area, wherever it goes, it goes. So you just give it to all the directions. And it will go as per uh, the, their uh, capability or uh, uh, as far as they can go. 
so uh, that is how you do it uh, when you have a certain insight into uh, your mind then one thing is uh, so that you are uh, kind of pondering it or you are being aware of it that uh, the, there is uh, there is a uh, lust uh, there is a hatred there is delusion so if one is aware of it then there is a certain kind of uh, uh, working or a certain kind of uh, activity which goes on uh, calculation which goes on and maybe that calculation which has gone on and come up as a kind of a, a report sheet to you that mm -hmm. this, uh, this is the uh, uh, kind of uh, the current report uh, which is there out there. But that is a kind of a good indication because those are the things when we know something, we can deal with it. If mm -hmm. we don't know uh, this, then it comes into something which is hidden. Yeah. When something is hidden, it is more of a, a, of a problem than something which is known. So uh, mm -hmm. if it is known, then you will be able to uh, forgive yourself or... Uh, 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 give yourself metta and uh, move on. And then you have to realize that these are also impersonal processes because mm -hmm. certain things was done in the past, uh, they, they come up as a reaction or, uh, over here in the present. And when you uh, know how to react in the present, which is with the six hours, by recognizing that this is an unwholesome state, uh, letting it uh, go, relaxing, smiling, and uh, coming back to a wholesome object. By uh, by acting in the present, you will be a, a, uh, affecting uh, what is uh, going to happen in the future. So that is how the progression uh, works. And by uh, having this mindfulness or awareness or uh, the six hours which you are uh, uh, saying uh, in short, by being uh, aware, that is how we are uh, able to stop the habitual tendencies. That is the inclination of our mind. So our inclination of mind is, in, if A happens, B we will do. So if we have to uh, change it to, if A happens, I will do C. So that uh, change of mind will be possible with the awareness. And this awareness, when you are coming up with this awareness, then uh, that is a good thing. One, one I'll tell you, this is a, something which has happened similar to me. When I was in Vatpan Anachad, I was, uh, as a lay person, uh, I, I was staying over there. And uh, one day in the night, I had a, 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 a fear arise. As certain people had talked about this uh, kuti, which I was staying uh, to be haunted. And uh, uh, the, there was a talk about scratching um, uh, sounds and everything. And I exactly heard that uh, scratching no noises uh, on the door. Uh, and uh, there was a fear arise in me. Uh, but I was over here and I was able to see the fear. So I, I was able to kind of in this state of mind, I was able to look at the fear and not experience the fear. Like there is fear, but I am the observer of the fear. Now I am not fearful. So uh, 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 sometimes the mind states uh, uh, when uh, it is uh, kind of uh, sufficiently de de developed, they kind of reveal certain things about ourselves. And that is a good thing because when you observe something, you are not that thing. So if you are able to observe fear, then you are not fearful. You are the observer of fear. So that, that is something uh, happens. So if you are, have observed uh, hatred, uh, lust and delusion, you are not uh, uh, hateful, you are not lustful, you are not delusional. You are the observer of those things. So that is a kind of a uh, kind of uh, uh, I think in a positive uh, aspect. I think this is a positive thing that one, if it is able to see from apart from oneself those things, then the impersonal nature of those things are more clearer to us, and it is easier to let go. So if I am angry, it is very difficult for me to become uh, calm. But there, if there is anger in me, it is easier to for me to let go of the anger. Because I am the observer of that anger. So that, that is how uh, one kind of uh, uh, tries and shifts our focus. So I think it is a good thing. And continue uh, the practice. And uh, you know, you have to know, remember that uh, attention is the most important thing. Uh, Buddha's uh, teaching is uh, based on attention. Where you are putting your attention, is uh, the most important thing. That is the reason 6R has the first step is you recognize. Because there is a habitual tendency, You by habitual tendency, you go over here, 
you recognize, then release, and then you relax, re smile, and come back to whatever uh, is your wholesome as activity or even the, your uh, daily activity which you are doing. If you are cooking, if you are drinking tea, then you can just be drinking tea. Zen kind of makes it a kind of point to just do what you are doing, you know. So that uh, that aspect uh, is there because uh, uh, you are in the habitual tendencies when you are doing uh, something, you are not doing that. Because when you are drinking tea, you are not drinking tea. You are thinking about something else. The tea kind of uh, links to uh, the market and market leads to the price uh, which are uh, getting crazy then it uh, links to the income uh, sources and then it links to the people who had owed you money and if they had given you money then uh, their situation will be different and then it links to something else and then the tea remains there and uh, that becomes a kind of a mechanical activity and your mind is going over there uh, different places. So Buddha says the mind is the fastest traveler because one second it can be over here and another second we can be in Mars. You know? <laughs> so that distance uh, is very fast for the mind to travel. So uh, being aware, being uh, able to kind of recognize what is there and then uh, being able to let it be. Not fight with it, not change it because that is there. Because that is also an impersonal uh, process. So not fighting with it, uh, just uh, recognize and release is the what what is the uh, is the uh, to let that be as it is, even if there are thoughts about uh, whatever uh, thoughts are coming up. If you are uh, able to keep your attention on uh, your activity, like drinking tea or making food or uh, cleaning, whatever you are doing, if you are able to keep your attention over that, then uh, the habitual tendencies don't have that much effect. You take away energy. Why does this happen? When this happens, why does this happen? Because there is an amount of energy in there. When we are taking away energy from it, uh, by not paying attention, what is the uh, food for those uh, things which come up? Is our attention nutriment? The Buddha says that one thing which you understand, you will be able to uh, kind of attain Nibbana, that is nutriment. What are you feeding? So if the thought comes and you are feeding the thought with your attention and then uh, next time that thought comes up, the reaction is more uh, kind of uh, 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 more uh, towards the same uh, which you had, had happened in the past. But when you are doing 6R, that is when you recognize and release, then you are taking away energy. Then uh, what happens is the habitual tendencies uh, naturally become weaker and weaker and at one time it falls. That is how the last uh, sutta uh, goes. No? Then if it is fully there, you are a, a, a arahan. If then weaker, then uh, anagami. Then weaker, once uh, once return. Then weaker, sutta para. Then weaker, then a dhamma follower. Then once return, faith follower. So the weakness, uh, uh, how does it, uh, one uh, kind of bring about it by taking away energy. Why? How we can take away energy? By putting our attention on the whole self. Not worry about what is there, uh, how strong it is there, your habitual tendency or how your uh, tendencies are uh, kind of taking over you. Those are the things uh, which will not help because that will put attention on the tendencies, that will put attention on the <clears throat> what is there. What we have to put uh, our attention, what we want it to be. So that is the reason sometimes uh, Buddha's teaching seems very idealistic, that uh, me uh, metta is very idealistic, karuna is very idealistic, uh, mudita is very idealistic. Uh, so uh, compassion is there or uh, sympathetic joy is there, equanimity is there. So that are uh, considered idealistic, but you put your attention where it is, uh, where you want to go. One of the things Buddha says is if you are doing uh, dana, and a person uh, has a good uh, uh, record of uh, giving. He has to be careful on what he wants. So uh, one of the suttas, Buddha says that if he wants to go uh, and become a tree deva, then he will, uh, on his passing away, he'll become a tree deva. If he wants to become a uh, four, uh, go to the four kings, uh, deva ram, 
the then heavenly realm of four kings you will be born if you want to go to uh, uh, kind of uh, 33 tavatem sudeva then he will go to the uh, heaven of the 33 kings if you want to go to uh, further away be uh, born in the uh, brahma world then he will be born in the brahma world so where you put your attention in that case also is very important so if you are doing a good you are doing good meditation you are go doing good uh, uh, dana uh, uh, there is dana shila bhavana then you have to be careful about what you wish for they say there is a saying in Eng uh, english no that you have to be careful what you wish for so buddha says that that is practically uh, 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 very important like uh, one of the suttas uh, buddha uh, there is two uh, ascetics who come they are a uh, dog ascetic and a cow ascetic a dog ascetic lives his life as a dog he barks uh, he eats uh, what has been thrown on the ground and uh, a cow a a a ascetic uh, uh, kind of uh, makes cow sounds and uh, uh, eats grass and all those things so the buddha say, uh, they asked the buddha what is our future destination because we have been doing this practice for a long time so the buddha uh, refuses uh, three times because uh, the buddha does not want to uh, kind of hurt their feelings then uh, the buddha uh, uh, finally says that uh, the dog ascetic will be reborn as a dog and the cow ascetic will be reborn as a cow they are living a, a, a life of a, a good shila but their their uh, uh, attention is there on the dog world or the cow world so because of their attention is there on those uh, aspects because they will not steal they will not uh, kind of uh, kill they will not uh, uh, do uh, uh, sexual misconduct they will not have uh, bad speech or they will not have uh, intoxicants they will have good sila but their aspect or of attention is totally on certain things which will not give them benefit which is the dog world uh, or the cow world so the next life they will be re reborn as a dog and a cow. So the attention where you put uh, when you are doing your practice or when you are doing your dana or when you are having a good uh, shila, then you will have to be careful about what you wish for. So uh, in this uh, uh, thing, uh, the Buddha also kind of uh, asks you to wish for or put your attention towards the awakening because awakening is the best uh, because wherever you are reborn, even in the Brahma world, that is also impermanent. And that also has uh, Dukkha. And that is also uh, a, a certain thing which uh, does not give full satisfaction. So you have to kind of uh, incline your minds towards uh, awakening. In, uh, and that awakening is just a simple thing. You have understanding. Understanding if it is wholesome or unwholesome. If it is unwholesome, you let it go. If it is wholesome, you hold on to it. It's just an understanding and one can understand for oneself. If one is angry, one knows. One is kind of uh, greedy, one knows that one is greedy. Then you can just uh, let it be, release, relax, smile and return. So that is a continuous practice one can do. Thank okay. you so much. <laughs> okay, <laughs> is there any other question? Any question regarding uh, practice or anything like that? So then uh, we will end the, uh, if there is no more questions, no more questions, then we'll end this. Is there a question? Evert, no? Evert. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, no, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll no. ask. I was just thinking, I was just thinking, uh, Bhante. Um, yeah. um, so it, you, you said uh, that energy uh, is, is attention or is it the same as attention? Is, it is, is a, uh, a kind of a, uh, I'm not, I'm uh, just take this word as kind of a, as much as a, a vaguely as possible energy. So uh, see if there is food, okay, and uh, the food can be considered to be energy because when we have a food, we have energy. Uh, in that same way, uh, what uh, your habitual tendencies are has a a, a, a certain amount of inclination. So if this happens, you go like this, okay? So that is what I call energy, okay? And when you are putting your attention to it, this becomes more permanent. So whenever this happens, you go like this. And that becomes more and more uh, prominent because you are paying more and more attention to that. 
So that is the energy uh, uh, aspect of it. And what is the uh, aspect of uh, not giving it food or not giving it energy is you, uh, when, uh, uh, when this happens, you go like this. When you uh, happens, this happens, you go like this, and then you are taking away the incl inclination of the mind to do this and uh, making it into this. So that is how uh, the mind works. And uh, the uh, concept of uh, food or nutriment uh, as uh, uh, kind of translated by Mukhi Bodhi, that concept of nutriment is the new, uh, concept which you, one has to understand very clearly because that concept is there uh, in many aspects. One of the aspect is the food which we eat, that is nutriment. Uh, there, are, uh, there is a food which the devas eat, that is also nutriment, that, uh, that is uh, solid or subtle. Then there is a nutriment which is a contact, which is uh, a nutriment. Then uh, the, uh, uh, there are, uh, I think there are uh, four different type of nutriments are there. Consciousness as nutriment. So that uh, is something which uh, one understands that uh, what is the attention when is giving, that is the nutriment for all our thoughts and actions. So for us, uh, the most important aspect is the attention. As a, as a practitioner, as, as a meditator. Because wh what happens is our attention moves to one other thing and that time we have to uh, 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 take a choice of uh, releasing it or being with it. So the Bhante Vimaramsi says that the only time you are not meditating is when you recognize your mind attention has moved and you stay with it. That is the only time you are not meditating. Even if you are going back and forth 100 times in a sitting, you are still doing a good job because you are still in this realm of taking away the energy from what has come up. Yeah. Okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, then we will share merits and uh, uh, if you have any questions or if you want any topics to be uh, 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 kind of uh, discussed, uh, you can uh, put it on WhatsApp group. Uh, I will be taking uh, Wednesday and the next Sunday uh, also, I think so. And uh, uh, Sister Kema may come uh, uh, on uh, 31st, uh, that is the 31st, no? 31st, uh, he may, she may come or maybe uh, she may come again on this uh, after two Sundays. She's uh, now gone to uh, uh, the place where they're going to have uh, the retreat. So she'll be there in 10 days retreat, okay? Okay, then we'll share the merit. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.